How's it going guys? I'm James from Kit Guru. Welcome back to the channel. Before we start this review, I just want to say a quick thanks to those of you that have subscribed to the channel over the past few months. It's really helping the channel grow and we're heading towards that 100,000 subscribers mark now. Uh, for those of you that maybe are just tuning in for the first time today, please don't forget, hit that subscribe button down below if you like what you see. Anyway, moving on to the review. Today we are looking at the new Fantex Enthu Pro 2 and this is a case that I'm really interested in because I actually used to use the original Enthu Pro. Now that case was an excellent case. It had a few limitations mainly with the radiator placement at the front of the case but overall it was a really solid well-built case and one that I really enjoyed using. So let's see today how the Enthu Pro 2 compares to the original. So as some of you may know the Enthu Pro 2 was revealed at CES earlier this year and it's actually based on another Fantex case the Enthu 719. It's a full tower chassis and it shares basically the same structure as the 719 the same motherboard area just with different top and front panels side panels are slightly different as well. The main core of the system or the main core of the chassis is based on that 719 so that means you've got all kinds of different features it's got excellent water cooling possibilities, multiple radiator mounting positions at the front, top and the floor of the case as well as the option to build either a dual system so you can have a full size system at the top of the case with a motherboard up to E ATX form factor and then right down at the bottom of the case you can build a smaller mini ITX system in addition, you can also run dual power supplies in this system. You can take one of Fantex Revolt Pro power supplies, connect another uh, standard power supply directly to it. And then that offers additional power for a single system, or you can use it for redundancy purposes, just in case of some kind of power failure. So let's jump on in and have a look at some of the features of the Enthu Pro 2. For those of you that are familiar with the original Enthu Pro, you'll notice that the Pro 2 has a very similar understated look to it. That's something I personally quite like. Along the front panel, you've now got a full vented section. The original version of the Enthu Pro had five and a quarter inch bays in the front, at least two or three if I remember correctly. But now you've got this full length vented front panel. This is actually made from what Fantex call a high performance fabric, maybe some kind of nylon material or something durable like that. And that obviously allows additional airflow into the front of the case and will allow you to install a larger radiator behind the front panel. That was the slight limitation with the original Enthu Pro. You could only fit a 240mm radiator in the front and there was a stack of uh, three and a half inch drive bays behind which made it a little tricky if you were trying to utilize that front for water cooling. To remove the front panel you just give it a tug from the bottom corner. The whole panel then comes off and you can see at the top of the panel you've got this flap that covers up the uh, front I.O. ports. And then behind the front panel you've got a magnetic dust filter made out of a woven plastic material. And if you want full airflow into the front that's completely unrestricted, you can always leave that dust filter off. Obviously you're going to get more dust into the system, but if, you, you know, if you're up on your system maintenance and you don't mind getting inside, cleaning it out, that will allow a little extra airflow into the system and then behind the dust filter you can see we've got space here for a large 480 mil radiator it obviously also takes 420 uh, 360 mil and smaller radiators as well and then right down at the very bottom corner of the front panel you've got a hole for a drain port if you need one for your water cooling system on the front IO panel you've got a total of four USB 3.0 type A ports uh, you can either connect all those four ports up to a single system or alternatively if you're running dual systems you can split those USB ports and you can have say two for the top two for the bottom. You've also got a USB Type-C Gen 2 3.1 port, uh, RGB control buttons, a reset button. Now that reset button you can either connect it up to your single system and have it as a reset button or again alternatively if you're running dual systems that can be used for a power button for the second system. And then your power button for the main system is on the top panel.
Another change from the original Enfield Pro is the side panel. The original had a kind of split steel and acrylic side panel and the window, it didn't cover the whole panel, it just kind of came down at an angle and allowed you to see uh, into the system and see a certain amount of the system. Now you've got a full tempered glass side panel. To remove this panel, there's just two thumb screws on the back. Loosen those thumb screws off, give the panel a pull towards the rear and then it kind of just drops down and you can lift it out. So there's a lot going on inside the Enthu Pro 2 chassis. Like I've previously said, 480 mil radiator positioning at the front. And then next to that, you've got these four SSD covers. Now these can be either used to mount SSDs in position, or you can simply pop these out, take all four of these out of the way. And then this actually reveals another place for mounting a radiator. So like the front panel, Along this section, you can also again mount up to a 480 mm radiator. Obviously, smaller radiators can fit in there as well. And then at the top of the chassis, there's another area for water cooling. Up here, you've got a uh, dust filter again. This is a perforated steel dust filter, so it's a little bit different to the front dust filter. And then behind that dust filter, you've got another space for up to a 360 mm radiator. Obviously, in all these radiator mounting locations, you can fit fans as well. You can have up to 320 mil or 340 mil fans in the top. Uh, along the front, you can get four fans in and same along this side panel. So inside the Enthu Pro 2, you can install dual system setups. In the top section, it's got a pretty traditional or standard looking area where you can have a, up to an E80X motherboard. You've got cable cutouts with grommets uh, along the side of the motherboard. There's more cable cutouts along the top and along the bottom. Then there's a small strip of RGB lighting that kind of splits the two sections of the case up. And then at the bottom of the system, there's a lot going on here. Uh, the power supply shroud, that can be used to mount uh, a mini ITX motherboard. So that's your dual systems. You've got a full system at the top, then a mini ITX system at the bottom. And then alternatively in the bottom of the case, this is where you can install a dual power supply. There's just a, a small panel to remove from the back that opens it up and gives you a power supply cut out in the back of the case. And then you just take your second power supply, put that in position there and just screw it in place as you would normally. And then you can obviously run your cables through from this power supply through this grommet, connect it up to your other power supply or then route it round to the motherboard area as usual. And then inside the accessory pack that comes with the case, you get this extra panel here. Um, I originally thought this might have been for mounting a graphics card vertically, but actually this replaces the uh, pre-installed panel at the back here. You remove that panel, put this one in its position, and that is used for your mini ITX build at the bottom. It also allows you to have a vertically mounted graphics card with three slots wide. Also in the accessory pack, you get this vertical GPU mounting bracket. That goes on the floor of the case down here to allow you to install that vertical GPU down in the bottom of the case. You've also got this bracket included in the accessory pack. This is a GPU anti-sag bracket. We'll show you how this works later on during the installation process, but instead of having something that props the graphics card up in this side of the case, this actually attaches to the case at the back and kind of helps tilt the graphics card up to keep it level. There's also four of these 3.5 inch hard drive brackets included in the accessory pack. These can be kind of slotted together. They just slide and lock into position. And then you can mount these in two different locations in the case. You can either put them uh, at the front of the case where you have removed the SSD covers from. You can have a total of four of them up there. Or alternatively, you can stack all four of these together or you can just stack two of them together and they just slide and lock into place down at the bottom of the case. And if you're not thinking of using the bottom of the case for a dual system, a dual power supply, or for additional storage, there's actually another area for water cooling or ventilation. At the bottom of the case, there's a handy removable radiator bracket. You just take out a single thumb screw, slide the bracket to the front, and then the whole bracket comes out of the case. And on here, you can fit either a 360 mil or up to a 360 mil radiator or 320 mil fans or 220 mil and 140 mil fan. So there's absolutely loads of options for the bottom of the case. Then around the back of the case, you've got a pretty traditional top section. There's a 120 mil or 140 mil fan or radiator mounting point. 
uh, a pretty standard I.O. cutout. There's eight horizontal PCIe slots, three vertical PCIe slots. And then towards the bottom, you've got this interchangeable panel for dual power supplies or for a dual system setup. You've got another cutout here for your first power supply. And that you can see that's fitted in a vertical orientation. That is probably one of the slight downfalls of this case. It could have done with probably just been a little bit wider to allow for traditional horizontal power supply mounting. It would have also allowed a bit more space at this side of the system to mount the GPU vertically. It's not a big problem, but a, you know, a few more millimeters could have made all the difference there. And then around the right hand side of the case, you've got a more traditional steel side panel with two vents, one for the radiator or fans uh, down the side of the motherboard, and then another one for the power supply fan. To remove this panel, again, just two thumb screws, pull the panel backwards, and it slides out of place. And as you can see, both of these vents have magnetic dust filters again, one for the radiator and one for the power supply. And then behind the right hand side panel, there's also quite a bit going on here. Uh, down at the bottom, you've got this cover with two thumb screws. This is a hinge cover, it just allows you to hide the cables from the power supply. You can also, if you want, you can slide that cover out, remove it completely or just remove it to make it a little bit easier when you're installing the power supply into the system. Where the power supply sits at the bottom of the chassis, there's also some anti-vibration foam pads and the same along the wall of the power supply shroud because the power supply will probably be right up against those so they'll just cut down any noise created by vibration. There's also a few handy cable management features. Obviously got the rubber grommets in these cable cutouts and more cable cutouts top and bottom. There's also cutouts down the side here to uh, bring the fan cables through or if you're installing the SSD drives to the SSD covers at the other side of the system, you can obviously route your power and uh, SATA cables through these cutouts. You've also got these um, Velcro straps. These are always a nice little feature to have. It makes it easier to hide your cables without having to use a ton of zip ties. And around this side of the case, you've also got three SSD mounting brackets. These just slide out of position. You screw your SSD to that, and then it just slots straight back in on these anti-vibration mounting rubbers. And with these three SSD mounting brackets on the back of the motherboard tray and the SSD covers that fit into the case here, you can actually fit a total of 11 SSD drives out of the box. There's also an additional space for four more SSDs in the 3.5 inch drive cages, but obviously you can't install an SSD and a 3.5 inch drive in there at the same time. If just four 3.5 inch drives isn't enough for you, you can actually buy these uh, 3.5 inch brackets additionally from Fantex. So that allows you to have a total of 12 3.5 inch drives installed inside this system. So you should never ever run out of storage space inside the Enthu Pro 2. And if you didn't manage to catch our earlier review by Leo of the Enthu 719, which this case is based upon, and you're wondering how to install SSDs to these SSD covers, uh, there's two ways to do it. If you want the SSD on show through the tempered glass side panel, you fix the SSD to this side of the SSD cover, and it's simply just line up the screw holes on the SSD with the cover and screw it in place with four screws. Or alternatively, if you'd rather have the SSDs in the back of the case and not on show, they simply just clip into the plastic lugs on the SSD cover and are held in position completely tool free. So I think that is all the basic features of the Enthu Pro 2 covered. It's probably there's some features I may have missed out. And if there is anything I've missed, we will have a full written review of the case over on the KitGuru website, so it might be worth heading over there and checking that out as well. Now we're gonna build a system inside the case. Uh, we're actually planning on building a dual system. Not sure if it's gonna work or not, but we'll find that out. Uh, inside the main system at the top, we're actually building an AMD Ryzen Threadripper system using a 3960X, a gigabyte TRX40 Aorus Master motherboard, 32 gigabytes of Triant Z RGB memory from G-Skill, uh, a Corsair MP600 PCI Gen 4 NVMe drive, a Gigabyte Aorus RX 5700 XT graphics card, and we're gonna try and run 
liquid cooling in both the top and the bottom system. So we're using for the top system an NZXT Kraken Z63 with the LCD display. In the bottom system, we're going to try and squeeze in the Kraken X73. That's a 360 mil radiator. I'm not sure if that is going to fit, but we'll find out again. And for the bottom system, we're going with kind of a mid to high end gaming system. So we're using a ITX motherboard from ASRock. This is the Z490 Phantom Gaming ITX TB3 motherboard. We'll be using an Intel Core i7 10700K CPU, 16 gigabytes of Aorus RGB memory, a gigabyte RTX 2070 Super Gaming OC card. And then to power the system, we're using one of Fantech's own Revolt X power suppliers. These are made by Seasonic, so we know that they're a good quality unit. And this is actually designed specifically for dual systems. So you've got two lots of cables, you can connect up to two systems, and it's a 1200 watt unit. So I'm hoping that will be enough power to run all this hardware. So let's jump on into the build and let's see how it goes.
So the dual system is up and running and surprisingly for me everything seems to be working perfectly straight away. This is the first time I built two systems inside one chassis and I was, if I'm being honest, expecting more to go wrong than what did so. I'm actually mightily impressed with the Enthu Pro 2. When you think that this is priced at around £130 to £140 and the features that it's got, it really is a bargain. You could even say at that price it's a budget case but it's certainly not budget features. One of the reasons that it is so easy to build a system inside the Enthu Pro 2 is the sheer size of the thing. Even with that big EATX motherboard installed in the top of the system, you've still got uh, plenty of room, plenty of space at the front. There's access still to the cable cutouts down the side of the motherboard. That's something that can be a problem when you install EATX motherboards in a system. And you've also got absolutely tons of room at the front to install custom water cooling. You can quite easily get an even bigger radiator and a large pump res combo in there, no problem whatsoever. And then there's still multiple uh, positions to fit radiators. The only slight issue I came across was fitting the Kraken X73 AIO in the Mini ITX system at the bottom. And if I'm being honest, that wasn't even an issue with the case. It was more of a compatibility problem with the motherboard. I ended up switching that out for a 280mm fractal unit that fits in perfectly well. One thing that's worth mentioning is if you are thinking of fitting a closed loop AIO uh, in the bottom system, you need to make sure that that AIO has long tubing because if you want to install the radiator at the front of the case or even down the side of the motherboard, you're going to have problems with certain AIOs and the length of the tube. And with the bottom system, they are really the only options you've got with radiator placement, either at the front or at the side of the motherboard. And you also just need to watch out when you're planning the position of your radiators. If you want to install at the front and the top, then that kind of sacrifices the radiator spot next to the motherboard tray. There's just not enough space to get one down the side and at the front and at the top at the same time. It's not a big problem. You've still got plenty of options in the, in the roof, in the floor and at the front but it does just slightly limit those options but saying that in a different case you're not going to have as many options in the first place so again it's not really a problem. As you can see we managed to do a reasonably good job with the cable management as well this is something that I was worried about having dual systems inside one case but Fantex they seem to have thought about more or less everything in this case all the cable cutouts are exactly where you want them to be um, routing the cables through even from the bottom system was very simple. You can easily hide them and run them through just that single grommet on the power supply shroud. Then in the right hand side of the case, again there's a lot of space in the power supply shroud so it's easy to hide any excess cables coming from the power supply. There's also plenty of tie down points and velcro straps so cable management is a piece of cake in the Enthu Pro 2. The only thing that I would say that is slightly disappointing or could have been made a little better is just a, a bit more space in that right hand side panel. That space is perfectly enough for this system but if you was to add more hard drives and extra components, extra cables, it might start to get a little bit tight around there. And that is really the only gripe that I have with the case. I would have liked a little bit more width on the chassis. Uh, Fantex could have added maybe 20 to 25 mil more. It would have given you a bit of extra space uh, on this right hand side for that cable management and also towards the bottom of the case for this vertical mounted GPU. With that GPU mounted vertically where it is, it is very close to the side panel. So that is going to obviously choke the airflow to it and maybe see uh, increased GPU temperatures. Naturally, one thing you're going to think about when you're installing two systems inside one case is the temperatures under load, especially if you're running both systems under load at the same time. And that was something that I definitely had at the back of my mind when I was building this system. But saying that, overall the thermal performance of the Enthu Pro 2 is impressive. A combination of high airflow due to the mesh front panel and support for multiple radiators means that even when both systems are under load, there is no sign of the CPU or GPU in both systems getting too hot. And there was only a slight increase of the CPU temperature in both systems when under load. The only minor note of concern is the load temperature of the bottom graphics card. Being so close to the side panel means the bottom GPU 
does run a little hotter than what we would consider optimal. However, even with both systems under load, the temperature of the bottom card was still well within acceptable limits. So there we have the Fantex Enthu Pro 2. It's a case that I'm really impressed with. Uh, I wasn't sure what to expect when this case was delivered to me, but it has really exceeded my expectations. And it is great for multiple purposes as well. If you maybe use a system during the day for work, you're doing some video rendering on that top system and then you, you've got some export that's going to take you, you know, hours to complete. You can always switch to that bottom system, carry on working, or if it's in the evening and that's still exporting those files, you can kick back and do some gaming using that bottom system. It's obviously perfect for streamers as well. The top system can be used as the main system. And then you can have that bottom system with a capture card in, you know, sorting all your video capture out. And then if you want to switch to storage mode, it'd make an ideal home server with a PC built in as well. So I hope you enjoy watching this review of the Fantex Enthu Pro 2. If you have, then don't forget to hit that subscribe button down there and give us a thumbs up. And you can also head on over to kitguru.net where there's a full written review of this case. And then there's always our Facebook and Twitter pages where you can discuss what you think of this case with other KitGuru readers and viewers. I've been James for KitGuru. This is the Fantex Enthu Pro 2. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.